Well, you know, if I had to say to you what is the answer, I would say massive bloodshed. I really would. I don't really, honestly, deep down believe in political action. I think the system contracts and expands as it wants to. It accommodates these changes. I think the civil rights movement was an accommodation on the part of the, those who own the country. I think they see where their self-interest lies. They see a certain amount of freedom seems good, an illusion of liberty. Give these people, give these people a voting day every year so that they'll have the illusion of meaningless choice. Meaningless choice that we go like slaves and say, yo, I voted. The, the limits of debate in this country are, 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 are established before the debate even begins, and everyone else is marginalized. They're made to seem either to be communists or some sort of disloyal person. A kook, there's a word, and now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that, that, is, that is, uh, sh should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. So who, you know, the only way you cure that, death, bloodshed, I don't advocate it, but I see that it's really the only answer. Quick interview with George Carlin, probably a couple months before he died. George Carlin was a brilliant observer of nature, the nature of man, and became more politically aware and activist uh, towards the end. And you know, it's unfortunate that I didn't uh, appreciate him until he left. Here's another one. Um, my last question, uh, George, is that it, it seems to me you're kind of an icon for someone who can see the um, bad things going on, and but not let it sort of harden your heart, not let it get into you and screw up your either mental state or your emotional state. How, do you have any advice for people on how you can still stay engaged in the world and not just go insane with anger and resentment? become a spectator, that's what I am. Um, I have found that over the last 20 to 30 years, somewhere in that span between 20 and 30 years ago, I began to pull away from having a stake in any of this. I don't really have an emotional stake in the outcome anymore in terms of my caring. I don't really give a fuck when you get right down to it. I don't care what happens to my, uh, my species because I think this species has squandered great gifts, namely uh, and especially the gift of this mind we have, the brain, the uh, brain slash mind, which is able to uh, distinguish between subject and object as a starter and able to do a lot of abstract things that, uh, that should have led us better places. And the opposable thumb and walking erect and that whole package, we should certainly have done better than to embrace superstitious religious belief that rules us and leads us and the pursuit of goods and, and profit and territory and power. That's what we turned into. Um, and I think the same is true of this culture. I have also found myself pulling away from this culture and not caring about the outcome because... I, I think the same thing is true. This culture, the country, the American country, was given great gifts. It, it developed great gifts on its own at the beginning, and I think we squandered these, these ideals, these noble purposes and ideals that we began with. And we went off the track um, because of the prosperity, primarily. We were always infected with the religious thing. That was always there underneath everything. But... But, but prosperity led to greed and possessiveness and wanting to own things and have them for their own sake. And now uh, the American people politically have been bought off, have been completely silenced and bought off by gizmos and toys. And that's a line from the current show. And um, it's, it's just a shame. So, so I pulled away emotionally and I said, you know what, fuck them. Let them do what they want to do. I'm going to enjoy this shit as a spectator. And I look at it as a show. It's a big circus. It's a big, it's a big parade, whatever, you, whatever um, metaphor you want to use. I think of it as the freak show. I, I like to say this. When you're born in this world, you're given a ticket to the freak show. When you're born in America, you're given a front row seat. And, man, I'm sitting there, and I have my notebook out, and I'm enjoying the show, and I wish I could live a thousand years to watch this all develop, the rise of Russia, the rise of China, the Muslimization of, um, of, of Europe, the decline.
decline of the white race. It's going to be an amazing story as it develops, and, and I just wish I could see it all. I'm 70 now. I'll probably live to between 90 and 100, I think, and uh, I'll get to see some of it. But, um, but it is an interesting, exciting thing to watch if you can detach yourself emotionally. And that's the end of that. That's the best way to uh, swallow all that stuff and believe it and still walk down the street right. singing a happy... That's right. Happy t- 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 There's no anger in it, see? There's no anger. There's no emotional stake. And, uh, again, that's kind of George Carlin's way of starting off what I started this whole module with is a kind of zen-like, cow-like attitude of kind of going along and observing things and not reacting and not becoming emotionally energized by it and being uh, um, going along with the waves as opposed to rallying against it and, and expending all this energy. And there's a great way of bringing balance into your life, too. Um, when I first started down this road, I, I became obsessed with it. I wanted to speak out. I wanted to march with signs, and, and none of that does anything. And, it's, and it wastes your life because it, it produces nothing. And it's kind of a negative way of going about doing this. But if there's a positive way of going about doing this where you can have fun, wake people up to new ideas and have fun, uh, you know, attacking politicians or ideas with comedy or making fun of them, it can be a very exhilarating way. I mean, this uh, Sons of Liberty Academy has taken me close to eight months to put together, and I've enjoyed every step of it, even though I've been, you know, worked all sorts of hours. I mean, I can't even tell you how many hours I put into developing this whole project but it, it it was great for me to do that, and I hope this inspires others to do even better than this and add on to it.